WCBI News at 10 starts now. As Mississippi continues reopening, a new COVID-19 hotspot has emerged, the state capitol. Thank you for staying up with us tonight. The State Department of Health is looking into an outbreak after some lawmakers have tested positive and while still others are sick and awaiting test results. Courtney Ann Jackson has the latest. Lawmakers returned to the Capitol Monday not for passing more laws, but rather to see if they would pass the COVID-19 test. The most public announcement of a positive diagnosis coming from Speaker Philip Gunn. And this morning I was informed that I too have tested positive for COVID. Although the exact number of House members who have tested positive isn't known, their colleagues hear the numbers growing. I've been told we have over 10 House members that have tested positive already. Representative Tom Miles was among those who went for a test Monday. It's a scary thing for me personally because, you know, earlier in the year I lost my mom to COVID. And it's a good reminder that uh, this thing's not over with. This is another reality check to all of us and Mississippi. Even legislators can catch this thing. Representative Chris Bell says masks were encouraged while they were hammering out the state budget and changing the state flag. But not everyone was wearing them. We had an opportunity to all show the world uh, that we were taking this virus seriously by wearing masks. And what happened was everyone got comfortable. Uh, everybody got lax. Governor Tate Reeves also getting a coronavirus test. And so we believe that it was smart to self isolate. Uh, we believed it was smart to uh, go to. Um, the doctor and, and get a test. Video shows Reeves and Gunn shaking hands after the governor signed the bill to change the state flag last Tuesday. Some lawmakers say they're hopeful this outbreak can serve as a reminder. This virus has no uh, determination whether you're Democrat or Republican, black or white, uh, purple, red or yellow. It's affecting everyone. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. Here at home, you'll need a mask or face covering if you have to do business in Octibaha County. The Board of Supervisors approved an order this morning that requires face coverings inside all county buildings and businesses outside the Starkville city limits. The measure passed unanimously and goes into effect tomorrow morning. It will remain in effect until further notice. Starkville aldermen are expected to discuss and vote on a mask mandate at their meeting tomorrow night. It would apply to businesses inside the city limits. While many hospitals are more equipped than others when it comes to dealing with COVID-19, rural facilities like Noxabee General Hospital have had to find ways to adjust and do it quickly. Our Bobby Martinez tells us more about those obstacles and how the medical team is dealing with this pandemic. We've adapted through caution. COVID-19 has placed many hospitals in uncharted territory this year alone. And here at Noxabee General Hospital, COVID-19 has taught them many lessons, one being teamwork. Well, I learned that working together as a team is the most important thing, that you communicate well with one another and you voice what your concerns are and you be patient and you hear them out. McKay says there were many challenges the hospital faced at first. At first, you know, there was the issue we didn't know if we were going to get the personal protective gear that we got, and that's worked out. The state's worked very well with us, and a lot of the manufacturers have risen to the occasion. Um, and the other thing is, you know, we don't we don't have uh, ventilators here, which is the more serious uh, COVID patients who require ventilators. And they always have to step up to a higher level of care. McKay says there are barriers in a hospital to separate non-COVID patients. We have an isolated hall. We have temporary barriers that is, is similar to what you see in the convenience store that has a plexiglass. And we have barriers. And then we have our COVID staff works exclusively in that area and they don't carry to the other other patients that are non-COVID. Meg Ebert, who will soon lead the hospital as administrator, says COVID-19 has forced the hospital to make many adjustments to best assist each patient. Well, with COVID, it's something we've never experienced before. So we have really had to just work together as a team, come up with new solutions, with new ideas. Um, we're here to provide health care for our community and it changed the way in which we did that. We have just learned to just just do it, work together, and persevere in health care as heroes. Knoxby County has reported 267 positive COVID-19 test results. Eight people have died after being diagnosed with the virus. 
A mild and muggy Monday night out there. Take a look at these temperatures. We're still in the upper 70s to near 80 across much of the area. And yes, if you have not stepped outside, it is another muggy and humid day and still humid as we get into the overnight hours. Tonight, 71 for the low. As I mentioned, very muggy. Can't completely rule out a few more showers here in the next couple of hours. Generally, I think most of us will stay dry overnight tonight. Tomorrow, once again, more chances for some afternoon showers and storms. Another hot one, close to 90 degrees in some spots with the humidity continuing to stick around. And as I mentioned, over the next several days, it is going to be hot and humid. Muggy meter almost off the charts. I've got more details on your forecast coming up in just a bit. Scott. All right, Trevor, thanks so much. A divided Lowndes County Board of Supervisors agrees on a big move with one voice. Supervisors voted to move the Confederate monument from in front of the courthouse. Now, you may recall District 5 Supervisor Leroy Brooks made a motion last month to have the statue removed. That motion failed in a 3-2 vote. After that vote, then Board President Harry Sanders was recorded making racist remarks to a newspaper reporter. As Quentin Smith tells us today, Sanders was one of the three supervisors to change his vote on the matter, making the monument's move from the courthouse lawn a unanimous vote. For more than 100 years, this Confederate monument has been standing tall outside the Lowndes County Courthouse, but now that's about to change. The Lowndes County Board of Supervisors unanimously agreed to have the monument relocated to Friendship Cemetery. The winds of changes are blowing in Mississippi. One small step for man, it'll make an even giant step for mankind. I'm, I'm happy it's gone. We look forward to the monument being in a more suitable place. District 2 Supervisor Trip Harston was the first to address relocating the monument during Monday's meeting. It's a decision he's now in favor of. However, that wasn't the case last month when the issue was first brought up. As you well know, we voted against moving the monument. Since that time, I have heard from a lot of my constituents in District 2, a vast majority of them who said we, they think it is appropriate that we move the monument uh, to a more suitable location in, in Friendship Cemetery. This monumental vote is just the first step in the process. The county still has to get clearance from the State Department of Archives and History to have the statue relocated. Then the city must deed the county a piece of property at Friendship Cemetery for the statue. And lastly, the county has to get bids to have the monument moved. Columbus city leaders have already agreed to help the county with the relocation. Well, you know, it is the city land. You know, we did get someone. Thank you to whoever you are, the generous donor to donate that land in Friendship Cemetery. But from a city's perspective, as a city, we're going to um, split the split the bill with the county as well as helping them, you know, get it moved down to Friendship Cemetery. I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't take as long as 60 to 90 days. Hopefully not that long, but certainly you want to give yourself time. District 5 Supervisor Leroy Brooks has been pleading for weeks now to have the monument relocated. While he's happy with the board's decision, he says the monument isn't the only thing that needs to go. They should hand the Harris Sanders need to resign for the good of this community. Sanders only spoke once during the meeting. That was to second a motion that was made by a fellow board member. Sanders declined to give any comments after today's meeting. The Columbus City Council is expected to discuss deeding the county land and helping with relocation costs at their meeting tomorrow night. A group of concerned parents in Caledonia want to see some changes at the school there. A Facebook group known as Unify Caledonia is circulating a petition to drop the name Confederates from the school's sports teams. They say the message behind the mascot is hurtful and insensitive to students. Caledonia schools have been using the name Feds in recent years, but families want a new identity. Members of the group are hoping the school board will make a decision to change it. I think it's going to help unify all of the students who attend there, not just, you know, certain students who can um, associate with that mascot. I think it's really a divisive technique um, that was put into play, and I hate that it's still in place now because I feel like a lot of the students feel that it's insensitive to others, and it's not really along a racial divide. Um, you know, I feel strongly that other students who are there, you know, should all be represented as a whole. Lance County School District Superintendent Sam Allison says the board will continue to discuss a name change this month or in August. It's game on for Southern Lowndes County residents. The new gym and playground are now open in Crawford. Lowndes County leaders had a ribbon cutting ceremony today for the new facility. Those who helped make the project a reality hope people from all over take advantage of the new digs. Hopefully the facility will benefit kids from here to 
Knoxville County line to the Ottawa County line and surely Lowndes County. Uh, the areas are all condensed and close uh, in distance. So for those areas that lack a facility, this facility is a reward for all of them. We think the, the community is going to be, be happy with it. We think they're going to be really proud to, to have this facility here. We know, we know we're excited because the kids are going to have something else they can do here. And something to be proud of. Project cost $375,000. 350 of that was from a bond bill. The county paid the extra twenty-five grand to add a new pavilion and a playground. A northeast Mississippi town is now designated an official Mississippi Main Street community. The Mississippi Main Street Association made that designation official during a ceremony on the front steps of the Nettleton Town Hall this evening. Nettleton applied for the designation and will get advice from Mississippi Main Street on ways to preserve and revitalize the downtown area. Definitely makes the city look better um, and it's going to naturally attract more people to the city. Um, and like I said, it's a great city, got a great school system um, and we just want to keep it going for our kids. Since 1993, Mississippi Main Street Association has provided more than $5 billion in public and private reinvestment back into Main Street communities. All right, we're going to send things back over to meteorologist Trevor Burchett. Trevor, I like, okay, I got to point it out again, but uh -huh. you call it the muggy meter? The muggy meter, the I comfort like index, whatever you want to call it. I like muggy meter. I like that The better. bottom line is it is going to be hot <laughs> and humid regardless of if we have the rain around which we are going to have the rain, but it's also going to be muggy. Summertime in Mississippi, you yeah. got to love it. Take a look at this. Here's what we're tracking for the next several days. The rain could lead to some flash flooding, but it's still going to be hot and humid. Keep that umbrella on standby. That's the bottom line for the next few days. Your full first alert forecast is less than three minutes away. Don't go anywhere. Stay with me. Your WCBI first alert AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Trevor Burchett. Well, a few very isolated scattered showers and storms across the area today. Most of us remain dry, and that is remaining the case into the 10 o'clock hour as the sun has set. Here's radar right now. We did have a heavier thunderstorm come through Sherlock in uh, southern portions of Knoxville County not too long ago. And some quick downpours off to the north and west, just south of Oxford uh, and north of Water Valley. But generally, most of us are dry, and even that little shower is going to continue to push off to the west into Panola County and leave the official WCBI viewing area. But we did have some clouds across portions of the area today. Take a look at this time lapse from Columbus. Some beautiful sunset uh, images here. If I can get this to come up, let's see if it'll go. Let's see here. Nope, I guess not. Scott, can you call tech support for me? Here we go. There we go. Just had to switch out the clicker. I think the battery's died. I'll have to call engineering on that one. Take a look at this sunset, though. Worth the wait. It is absolutely marvelous there. Uh, some beautiful oranges and pinks in the sky as the sun set. Totally set now. A little bit dark out there in the 10 o'clock hour. Here's your current observation. 77 in Starkville. 79 in Oxford. We're still 79 in Tupelo as well. 78 at the Air Force Base and in West Point. I want to take you out to the Atlantic Ocean right now. Tropical Storm Edward, the earliest fifth named storm on record since 2005. That beats the storm that was in 2005. So we are getting an early start to hurricane season. Luckily, this one way out in the Atlantic Ocean, moving off to the northeast at nearly 40 miles an hour, and it's going to continue in that direction. Could actually bring some impacts to the UK and London. Believe it or not, if it continues on the current path, not going to be an issue for us here in the Gulf Coast. 71 for the low tonight, very muggy, just a few isolated showers, otherwise mostly cloudy tonight. And on the Emerson Animal Hospital forecast, take a look at Jake. Is he not just the most handsome thing you have ever seen? Unfortunately, Jake is not going to have any good news for us on this three-day forecast. Scattered showers and storms continue at least through the weekend. But as I mentioned, we're going to stay hot and humid. Highs close to 90 for the next several days. And the rain chances really stay high even going into the weekend. Still some scattered showers and storms possible even as we get into early next week. Here's that AccuWeather seven day forecast. Best chance for rain is tomorrow through Thursday. So just keep that umbrella handy. Still some scattered showers and storms possible into the weekend, even into early next week. But the heat and humidity is here to stay. It's July in the south. Highs near 90 overnight lows in the low 70s. That heat probably keeping our engineers at home tonight, Trevor. All right, we take a look back on a Hall of Fame career coming up a little later in the show.
watching WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back, everyone. It's always important to drink plenty of water, especially in the heat. Tonight, we talk about dehydration and our health talk with Baptist. Hi, I am Lee Richardson, a physician in the emergency room at Baptist Memorial Hospital, Golden Triangle. Tonight, we will discuss dehydration. Dehydration occurs when you lose more fluid than you take in and your body doesn't have enough water and other fluids to carry out its normal functions. If you don't replace lost fluids, you may get dehydrated. We lose water every day in the form of water vapor, in the breath we exhale, and as water in our sweat, urine, and stool. Along with the water, small amounts of salt are also lost. When we lose too much water, our bodies may become out of balance or dehydrated. Severe dehydration can lead to death. Symptoms of dehydration include sleepiness or tiredness, children are likely to be less active than usual, extreme fussiness or sleepiness in infants and children, irritability and confusion in adults, thirst, decreased urine output, no wet diapers for three hours for infants, and eight hours or more without urination for older children and teens, few or no tears when crying, dry skin, headache, constipation, dizziness, lightheadedness, or fainting. Join us next time for Health Talk with Babis when we will discuss the causes of dehydration. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Calhoun City has their eyes on the prize this year. The high school football tour checks in with the Wildcats next in sports. CBI Sports with Courtney Robb. The high school football tour continues its stops in 2A with Calhoun City. Former assistant MD Jennings is the new man in charge of the Wildcats. Following former head coach Chad White's departure, Jennings looks to add some more gold to City's trophy case. Calhoun City is stop number 15 on the high school football tour. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour is brought to you by Itawamba Community College, Cannon Ford of Starkville, Monroe County Farm Bureau, Max South Broadband, and the Bank of Vernon. It might be the first year as head coach for MD Jennings. However, that doesn't mean the expectation changes for Calhoun City. Here in Calhoun City, you know, our, one of our main goals is always, you know, to win the, the region and then, uh, you know, uh, try to make a deep run in the playoffs. And, you know, the, the main goal for everybody every year is to win a state championship. So try to bring another one home. The last time the Wildcats saw a state championship was back in 2016. Just last season, Calhoun City wasn't too far off, finishing with a 9-4 overall record and securing a spot in the third round of the playoffs. Jennings looks to build off of former head coach Chad White's success by stressing the importance of hard work to his players. You know, one thing I tell the kids, you know, um, don't take hard work for granted. You know, if you're willing to work hard and, you know, put a little bit extra into it, you know, that hard work will pay off in the end. You know, I always tell people the, the little things make a big difference. Luckily for Jennings, this season's roster doesn't need much of a push to put in the necessary work. You know, this group is a, a dedicated group of young guys. Um, they're willing to do anything the coaches ask of them. So, you know, if they continue to stay on that path right there, um, it should be a pretty special season for them. Every day we come out here and work on plays and alignment and stuff. So we, we're getting it down pat. You just got to dedicate yourself and dedicate everybody else, inspire. Just, you got to be like a set an example. You got to be here every day, you know, and just work and work and grind. The Wildcats' current focus is putting in most of that hard work up front. I'm very excited about the O-line and the D-line. You know, if you can win the battle, battles in the trenches, you know, everything else will take care of itself. You just have to learn what to do first. Do we have to, you know, put in the, the work ethic, you know, learn how to do it. And then if they expect the run, we can just... Switch it up. Most of the seniors are on the line, D and offense. Calhoun City will begin the road to a state championship against Ashland on August 21st. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. You know, being able to bring that championship home, it means a lot. You know, um, think about Calhoun City. You know, we, we, we've been um, fortunate over the years to be able to win uh, state championships. So, you know, that's something we take pride in around here. Reporting in Calhoun City on the high school football tour, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour with Calhoun City High School is brought to you by Calhoun Banking Center. Here is
here's the full stop for the high school football tour this week. Obviously, just got done with stop number 15, Calhoun City. Tomorrow, Tuesday, will be stop number 16, Winona, then coming up on Wednesday, stop number 17, Water Valley, followed by stop number 18, which is Nettleton on Thursday, finishing out the week, stop number 19, East Union on Friday, and then the weekend will be dedicated to stop number 20 for Boonville on Saturday and stop number 21 for Hatley on Sunday. We get into Alabama week for stop number number 22 and beyond next week. But for any of those stops you may have missed, you can always go visit our website, WCBI.com. That's it for sports. More for you when we come back. All right, Trevor, we've been listening to him in between yeah. commercial breaks here. In venues that usually cater to violins, he brought a fiddle, and he played it like a few others could, combining country and rock to reach audiences on both ends of the spectrum. Country Music Hall of Famer Charlie Daniels passed away. Daniels, a singer, guitarist, a fiddler, he started out as a session musician, even playing on Bob Dylan's Nashville Skyline Sessions. Beginning in the early 1970s, his five-piece band toured endlessly, sometimes doing 250 shows a year. He even took a turn on the big screen in the 1980s, Urban Cowboy. He was probably best known for The Devil Went Down to Georgia, which hit number one on the country charts, number three on the pop charts in 1979, and still has a place in our producer's record collection. He was just telling me that a moment ago. Charlie Daniels was 83 years old. That song, the quickest way to get your foot step in. I yeah. will tell you that definitely will not be forgotten anytime soon. Tuesday through Thursday, better chances for some showers and storms. Keep the umbrella handy really though through the weekend. High staying pretty close to 90. That heat and humidity is going to continue. Overnight lows in the low 70s. So Scott it certainly feels like summertime down in the south. I like the muggy meter yeah. that you have. We'll and keep it's it around. It's not at miserable yet, but eh, it's miserable. Yeah, <laughs> it depends on on your opinion. To me, it's miserable. True. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.